Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to give you my top 10 tips for advanced or professional users of Lightroom. Theme tune! Do 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 do! Ba ba! Da da da! I feel like I'm in a boy band. Or maybe it's kind of... Good. Boy band. Uh, Backstreet Boys probably. <laughs> okay, so... After I did my tips for beginners, I had a, a great success with that. So people really wanted to know what I thought for professionals. So these are really for people that have been using Lightroom for a while or are definitely advanced users or professional users. But it's also good if you're a beginner to see where you can definitely go to. And also, if you like any of the things that I mentioned here, give me a thumbs up. And definitely if I, if I miss anything out, also give me a comment because that's really important. So here they are, my top. 10 tips for Lightroom professionals or advanced users. Number one, this is really, really huge. Build your own presets. Now, you might think, well, I do that anyway, but actually take time to hone in your presets. Not just, oh, I did this nice edit, I'll save it as a preset. But how does it work on other images? Really hone that in and update your presets and then categorize them really well so that you can just get your workflow flying out of the door for your clients and everything will be amazing. Tip number two, layer your brushes and layer your filters. So you don't always have to have a filter or layer set to 100% opacity. You can actually layer it all up and, and build the little highlights and shadows, then add another one or duplicate it and just have the highlights and don't include the shadows, for example. That means that you can then go back in once you've done more editing and go in and maybe make some enhancements without having to change the entire image or all of the brushes and filters. You've built them on as layers. That's really important and massively powerful. I have a lot of tutorials on that, so please um, take a look at those ones. Okay, get specific with your adjustments. So don't just use all of the sliders and go, that's great. Now start really using the brush and using those radial filters and things, using them all, create whatever effect you want to do, and then use the brush tool within the radial filter to erase sections. Get really specific with your images as opposed to just keeping things as a wide wash. That's really important. Okay, next thing, tone curve. It's incredible, we all know it's incredible. Use that with, the, um, uh, with your uh, luminance sliders and it's absolutely amazing. But now, focus in on the RGB. Really, see what happens if you drop the curve on the blue and boost it on the reds. Really see what happens if you crush the greens a little bit. And really use it to change the feeling and emotion of your image. That's important. Next thing, this is amazing. Number five, once you've done something for a while, practice. And don't practice to make the same effect on the same image. In my beginner's uh, tips, I said just keep on editing it over and over again. Well, with this one, what I'm saying is practice the same technique on different images. So go, well, I like that edit. Can I create this similar feel on a completely different edit? Okay, a different image, sorry. So you might have one in the sun and one inside, but can you create a feeling that is similar? So practice and hone in your feeling skills. That's really important. Okay, now this kind of links into that. And number six is really, really important. Create your own style. You don't want to be just, oh, you're a good photographer. You want people to go, oh, you should use the photographer because he shoots like this, or she's really good at this. Really create your style, and remember, don't get stuck either. Your style will change and evolve over time. You know, Picasso, how many periods did he have? You know, and yet each one was remarkable for its own sense. So don't be afraid to have a style, but also don't be afraid to grow and evolve and change your personal style. Lightroom is amazing for that. Okay, number seven. And again, this goes back to number six in a way. Number seven is this, don't get stuck in bad habits or don't get stuck in good habits. Anything that you've been doing for a long time, challenge yourself, go, okay, well that works. Now can I mix it up a little bit and do something else? And that's really important. Watch other videos, find new techniques for things that maybe you've never done or you've seen an image that you like, but you've never done an edit like it. You might not, might fit, it, fit into your style, but you may learn something. So always look at new techniques. Okay, number eight, update your workflow. So we always start off with an amazing workflow. We try and get it right at first, but as time goes on, you might figure out that you need a different workflow. And my workflow has changed about four times as, as I've got better. But remember this, don't be scared like, oh, I'm gonna change my workflow. What about the 150,000 photographs that I have in my old workflow? Well, remember, you update it for the future so all your next set of images use your new workflow. All of your, image, your old images could stay with your old workflow. Or when you get a bit of time, 
go through and update your old workflow. You can usually do it by dragging and dropping and moving things around into folders and you can leave it going overnight to actually sort things out. So definitely always look at improving your workflow because that will make you faster at editing and faster at giving things to your clients, which is the most important thing. Speed, quality and speed, okay? Right, the next one is number nine. And this kind of goes into the workflow a little bit, is use advanced collections ratings and color codings. So now that you, you might have a certain set of collections, so you might have your portraits and then you might have your landscapes and you might have 2014 and then 2015, we'll now start using them within different things. So you can say, we'll now start looking at things so that you can quickly find your portraits from 2014 that are all starred as green because you know that green you've set as summer. And then you might also then go for, well, I want to look at all of my lands landscapes from 2015 that are all marked in blue, because that means they were all taken in the winter time. So you can really start looking at your different things. So you can have landscapes from summer and winter as blue and green. Awesome. You can really develop these things around to use rating systems that work for you. I have a video on rating systems, so watch that one. Okay, next one and the last one is number 10, which is really important. Lightroom is a place of creativity. It's not just a place of business. I know once we become professionals or advanced users where we've edited tens of thousands of photographs, it, we can look at that screen and be, oof, you know, we've got all of these photos to edit. Try and always see it as something which is exciting to be like, okay, I get to be creative in my job. I get to be creative. So keep it in that realm. And one great way of doing that is have personal projects. Don't just use it for work. Okay, so even if it's just once a month, one day, just set yourself a personal project that you're gonna go and shoot differently that you do for your clients and edit differently. Because I guarantee, using personal projects, you will 100% bring that into your client work and it will just elevate and get better all the time. So that was my top 10 tips for advanced users in Lightroom. If you liked any of these tips, then give me a thumbs up. If you hated any of these tips, then give me a thumbs up. If you think I missed something really dramatic, then leave it in the comment box because I'll be really interested to see what you all think about this. My name was Ed Gregory from Photos in Color. And if you do want to get in contact with me, then you can hit me up on Snapchat. My code is um, clearly Ed, or you can visit the Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash photos in color, or go to photosincolor.com where all the tutorials are on there. You can get a free guide for better travel photography and all of those things. Anyway, let's just get on with this and get to the theme tune. Subscribe.